Hi. This is Recovery with Addict Kent. And today we're going to be hopefully uh, finishing up chapter one, or, or sorry, step one. I don't know about that yet, so I'm just waiting to see. Um, just slicking my hair for all the girls so that you can be astonished by the beauty that I have. <laughs> well, can you believe this is the 14th? Or, sorry, the 15th. Filling the emptiness. We think that we can get enough food, get enough sex, or enough money will be satisfying and everything will be all right. It's a lie we tell ourselves. In our addiction, we could never get enough drugs or money or sex or anything else. Even too much was never enough. There was a spiritual emptiness inside us. Though we tried as hard as we could to fill the emptiness of ourselves, we never succeeded in the end. We realized that we lacked the power to fill it. It would take a God greater than ourselves to do that. We stopped using and stopped trying to fill the emptiness with our gut with things. We turned to God asking for his care, strength, and direction. We surrendered and made a way for that God to begin the process of filling and made of our love, of our God, had for us. Slowly, our inner emptiness was beginning to fill. Now that we have been given God's gift of love, we do. We what do we do with it? If we clasp that gift tightly to ourselves, we will smother it. We must remember that love grows only when it's shared. We can only keep this gift by freely giving it away. The world of addiction. The world of taking and beginning taken the world of recovery, the world of giving and being given. In which the world do we choose to live? Just for today tells us, I choose to live in the fullness of recovery. I will celebrate my conscious contact with God of my understanding by feeling, sharing with others that which has been freely shared with me. So, when we share with others, as it says in step 12, after having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry the message to others and to practice these principles in all our affairs. It's very important that we do that. A new life. This is out of the AA book. Yes, there is a substitute, and it is wisely more than that. It is the friendship of Alcoholics Anonymous. Life.
will mean something at last. That's in Alcoholics Anonymous, page 152. Life is better without alcohol. AA is the presence of a God that keeps us sober. But the grace of God does even better. It brings service into my life. Contact with the AA program teaches me a new and greater understanding of Alcoholics Anonymous and that what it does, but most importantly, it helps to show me who I am, an alcoholic who needs the constant experience of Alcoholics Anonymous program so that I may live life giving to my, to me, by my God. So, we found that we cannot recover without the ability to be honest. Many of us cause, many of us came to NA after spending years practicing dishonesty. However, we can learn to be honest. We must begin to try learning to be honest in our ongoing process. We are able to become progressively more honest at as we work the steps and continue to stay clean the first step we begin practicing spiritual principles of honesty and admitting the truth about our drug use then we go and admit the truth about ourselves and our lives we face that we face what is not the way things could be or should be. It does not matter where we come from or how good or bad we think we were, hadn't it? When we finally turn to Narcotics Anonymous, the 12 steps, we begin to find the relief. As we begin the first step, it is important to ask ourselves some basic questions. Can I control my drug use? No. Am I willing to stop using? Not without help. Am I willing to do whatever it takes to recover? Damn Skippy. Given a choice between finding a new way of life in NA and continuing our addiction, recovery begins to appeal to us. We begin to let go of our reservations, those parts of our lives we won't surrender to the program. Most of us do have some reservations when we first get clean. Even so, we need to find ways of addressing them. Reservations can be anything. A belief that because we never had a problem with a particular drug, we can still use it placing a condition on our recovery, such as only staying clean as long as our expectations are met, a belief that we can still be involved with people associate with our, associated with our addiction, a belief that we can use again after a certain amount of time, a conscious or unconscious decision to work only certain steps with the help of our recovering addicts, we can find ways to put our reservations behind us. Most important thing of us to know about reservations is that by keeping them, we are resolving a place in our program for relapse. Now, recovery begins when we start to apply spiritual principles 
contained in the 12 steps of NA. To all areas of our lives, we realize, however, that we cannot begin the process unless we stop using drugs. Total abstinence from all drugs is the only way we can begin to overcome our addiction. While abstinence is the beginning, the only hope for recovery is a profound emotional and spiritual change. We have to get to the point where no matter what, um, we need God for our understanding. No matter what we do, no matter what's happening, no matter what's going on, no matter what we say, no matter what we do, actions always speak louder than words. How do we find this? Through faith. Be courteous. Joshua 1 7 says, Only he, thou strong and very courageous, that thou mustest observe to do according to all the law which Moses. My servant commanded thee, Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mightest preserve whatsoever thou goest. Living a life of faith takes courage. Most people don't realize it, but it does. It takes courage to stand up and face of sickness and declare your health by the stripes of Jesus. It takes courage to believe for the profanity and put your last dime in the offering plate when property is staring you in the face, or poverty is staring you in the face. There is going to be some days when you'd rather pull the covers over your head and hide and take another faith and stand against the devil. But you can't. Because the battle of faith isn't fought once and then forgotten. If we want to keep living in victory, you have to fight it again and again. There is no way around it, of course. Some of God's people still try to find one. The Israelites, for example, fought their battles should be over when they crossed the Red Sea, but they just began. So when they heard the reports of giants living in the Promised Land, they decided they couldn't face the fight. Their courage failed them. So they took 40 years. Detour through the wilderness. But you know what? They still couldn't avoid the fight. When the time came for the next generation to enter the promised land, the giants were still there. This time, however, they found the courage to face them. Where did they find it? In the Word of God, their leader, Joshua, and obeyed 
the instruction of the Lord and kept the word of his mind and his heart day and night. He'd mentioned on it and let it consciously remind him that God was on their side. If you're going to fight the good fight of faith to the finish, you'll have to do it just like Joshua did. You'll have to continually draw courage from the Word of God. So make up your mind to do it. Get the Word out and let it change you from coward to overcomer. Then march into battle and slay the giants with your hand. Well, I read the wrong day, but that's okay. We'll read the right one tomorrow. We'll read that one again. May the good Lord, may the good Lord bless and keep you. And all you do. God bless.